welcome to part four of my series on the A121S. We'll be wrapping up today with a look at the morphing capabilities, as well as a simple patch that'll give us some nice squishy weird sounds. Given all the different modulation capabilities of the A121S, it's easy to set up cross-modulation patches that give us all kinds of interesting chaos and weird noisy output. In this patch, I'm coming from the left and right outputs into a mult, and then I'm coming back out of that mult into the frequency input using the single frequency ins for each channel of the filter, but I've crossed them. So I'm sending the left output into the right frequency input, and I'm sending the right output into the left frequency input. I'll turn down the inputs for the arpeggio that I've got patched into both filters and increase the resonance. And then we can start to hear the output as it begins to cross modulate, creating all kinds of chaotic, interrelated, weird patterns. The left and right sides of the filters are doing different things, but they're related because they're cross-modulating each other in a continual feedback cycle. I'm starting to bring up the gain of the LFO that's driving the delta parameter, which is going to cause each filter's frequencies to sweep in opposite directions. resonance value means that when the filter is tuned low, each side of the filter produces its own sine wave LFO that then modulates the other side. We'll get back to this crunchy weirdness later, but first let's have a listen to what the filters sound like as we morph through the filter types.
your speakers as this part of the patch starts to get a little bit loud. I've got the resonance cranked and I'm making some tweaks to the delta controls and to the amount and the inversion of the cross modulation as well as the frequency of both filters. The stereo panning effect is created by the triangle LFO modulating the delta control which sweeps the left and right filters across each other in opposite directions. Now I'll bring up the input gain on the arpeggio again. Now I've tweaked the resonance back so the arpeggio is just pinging the filters. So in conclusion, it's easy to see why this new dope for filter is a real winner. It's not that expensive, it's almost like getting two for one filters. And there's lots of great inputs on the front panel. The front panel is really well thought out with lots of very detailed ways to control the interactions between the two filters. And then on top of that, there's a whole bunch of VCAs in the background that are giving you the ability to morph across the filter types. So as you've seen from the demos, it's not just switching filter types, but it's actually cross-fading from low pass to notch, from notch to high pass and high pass to band pass. This is an amazing capability that we don't really see in a lot of analog filters these days, and we certainly don't see in many stereo filters. But keep in mind that this dope for module does let you operate each of the two filters as their own mono filters. You've got full control and full voltage control of each of those two sides separately. So I think it's a real must for anybody looking to expand their filter arsenal when it comes to Eurorack modular. Thanks so much for checking this series out. Please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel and please consider joining my Patreon to help me make more of these videos to make more weird and wonderful modular music. I've got all kinds of interesting things on the way as I get ready for a big trip this spring to be an artist in residence in Viljandi, Estonia. Thanks so much and we'll see you next time. Happy patching!